Hi, my name is Christopher and welcome to my YouTube channel, Spinning Round. This is a first for me. I am a musician and a creator, and this is the first time I've decided to venture out into the vinyl community, which I've been a big fan of and have been a big admirer and watching lots of different people's channels. But I thought, you know what? I'd like to start my own channel. And what better way to start than to celebrate what arrived today? Ta -ta -da -da. Today, we're gonna to talk about the new Revolver Super Deluxe Vinyl Edition and going to give you, and I apologize for it, it was sort of my first open and my first uh, reveal. Uh, so the camera work is not great, but it gives you an idea of what's in the set. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's in it and whether or not you should spend your hard-earned money on it. So here we go. Well, here is the Revolver Super Deluxe vinyl set. And I'm just going to have a little open. What's nice about this, it's in this beautiful, I kind of like this. Universal does their packaging very well. Take the top off and look what we have here. Let's turn it around. There it is. There's the hype sticker. Looks wonderful. Let's see that in its box. Here's the spine. Take a look at that. So we have the book, the album, the Sessions album, and of course the album and the original mono mix. So this was a hefty price, I have to admit. However, even though it was a hefty package, sorry about that, let's fix this here. This is my first unboxing, so you'll have to forgive me. So there are the contents which we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video. My big beef is Revolver EP. To me, that was like the biggest disappointment. Oh, there's so much space <laughs> on a vinyl record, on an LP, that we could have had more than just four songs. So that's just my thing. So, so that is the unboxing of the Super Deluxe Vinyl. The vinyl's made in the Czech Republic, so we are hoping, hoping for good quality for sure. There it is. So I don't know if you're like me, but when you have a box set like this and you've got an open end, I actually tend to like to just cut the end like this, carefully along the edge, stop. Carefully do the other edge. So you have to be careful. Along this edge. And then just along here. Being careful not to. There we go. And if we pull. Ta -da! We have saved the majority of the shrink wrap for the box. All right, let's dive in and take a look at it. Well, and here we are. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. All right, let's pull out. Oh, the Robert Freeman original design. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely lovely. Ah, and look what we have here. There is our paperback writer and rain EP. Sorry about that. Again, this is my first unboxing, so thank you for being patient. Pretty lovely. Nicely done. They use the Parlophone test label from 1966, Revolver Sessions. And there's Psy 2, that's lovely. Okay, so, so far I'm impressed. 
even though I still think this set was overly priced, I'm impressed. And same thing for sides three and four for the session. So, so this is the LP with all of the outtakes. Wonderful. And there's the back cover, a slightly different shot, which is wonderful. Everything listed, keeping the same design idea. Love it. All right. So that's the first disc. Well, I think it's, what is it considered? It's considered, I guess, disc two, I guess. I guess that's what it's considered. All right. So here, here is the stereo remix right there. There we go. Good old Parlophone label. Did a nice job, I think, overall. What I'm curious to see, and I don't think they did, I'm wondering which remix of Tomorrow Never Knows that they used on the mono. I know we're on the stereo, but there we go. This is flat back, just like the other one. Nicely done. And correct me too, I think it was Robert Freeman, right? That did the, the photographs? All right, and this, this is what everyone is looking for, but I don't understand, oops, don't understand why. Because if you bought the 2014 monos, you don't need another mono. So, and most people buying this set are collectors. So honestly, I, I think again, a missed opportunity, what would have been nicer is the original stereo from the original tapes, unfutzed, unchanged. That would have been my hope. But, you know, I actually have been thinking a lot about this, and I probably think that the mono mix of Revolver, I prefer to the stereo for many reasons, the original stereo, that is. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing the new remix and see what it sounds like. That is the vinyl box set. It's beautiful. Oh, did I forget? There's a book! Very cool. You notice that there's like a little wispy to um, to suggest the hair that was on the original Klaus Vorman cover? Love it. Love it. So this is like... Looks really good. Let's get this back in the camera. There we go. As if we don't need to know what the track listing is. We have all probably memorized it. Wow. I love those photos from those videos. A lot of these pictures are probably going to be very familiar to most of us. Those of us who are huge Beatle fans. Oh, it's a great one. Chiswick House. Look at that. What I think comes to the fore when you listen to Revolver was how on point Ringo was and his playing. When you listen to the original take of Rain, which sounds funny, it just sounds like it's sped up, um, and you listen really carefully, you'll notice it wasn't sped up, but that was the original speed. It, he's going extremely fast. And the fills and the things that he did just define the song but man he outdid himself and it's so great when you listen to that outtake at the very end you hear them talking and you realize yep nope that's normal pitch <laughs> now i believe this was the taxman session i'm not sure if it says here but the burns bass sorry i mean burns burns ah oh, lovely Well, gotta say, is the book worth a hundred bucks? Maybe. <laughs> I, again, I, I share my concerns here that I feel that this vinyl set was way too expensive, but I wanted this book in full size. And the only way to get it in full size was to commit and buy the vinyl set, which I wanted the vinyl anyway. Gotta love that. I do love Aftermath. How many of you actually 
I wonder what your favorite Rolling Stone album is from that period. Just, I'd love for you to to write maybe in the comments and tell me. Uh, I think Aftermath is one of my favorites, and I love Between the Buttons too. But you'll notice there is that lovely Rickenbacker that has not been stripped of its paint yet. It's coming. Oh. Their use of sunglasses for this period, fantastic. Fantastic. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, this is just beautiful. And you have to love the tape boxes. So it goes through every song, which is wonderful. I'm just going to pick this up a little bit. Beautiful. Session session notes, lyrics, here, then, everywhere. Lyrics for Yellow Submarine. Um, it's great to hear the evolution of Yellow Submarine on the set. Uh, you know, it's amazing. They've done a good job considering most of these photos we've seen a thousand times over. They've still been able to... Uh, nice. That's very cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm impressed that they actually still have some of these original lyrics. Some notes from Phil McDonald. Oh, and the Got to Get You Into My Life sequence on the sessions. Fantastic. One of my favorites. Gotta love. Look at this. Like, love it. Hmm. Well, ah. Uh, I believe that's still at Chiswick House, right? Oh, nice. I love Klaus Vorman. I would like Klaus to actually do my next cover. Wouldn't that be fun? It would be nice to have that kind of money to say, Klaus Vorman, can you do that? In the reception. Well, this has not disappointed, but I have to tell you, Revolver is, again, one of my top three favorite Beatle albums, so it was inevitable that I was going to get this. Lovely. Lovely. And, oh, and look at those Rickenbacker cases. They look so brand new. Oh, the Gibson, the Epiphone, or the Epiphones. And wait a sec. There's a strap back there, but that's not one of the Sonic or the uh, the blue strats. Hmm. I'm going to have to do some checking. So anyway, that, my friends, in a nutshell, is the vinyl box set. It's beautiful. So that's a look at the box of this lovely set. What about the contents? Well, let me share with you my thoughts on what this thing sounds like. First of all, I'm a very critical Beatles fan, as I'm sure most of you are. For a lot of us, the original mixes were fine. The problem with Revolver is that it didn't make for a great stereo mix because of the reduction mixes on that four-track tape machine. Everything was kind of meant for mono still in 1966. When the stereo mixes were done, they were okay, but they were uneven. And sometimes you'd have drums on one side and instruments on the other, and it just seemed a bit uh, unorganized in this modern day and age. What I like about what Giles has done is he's brought this album to the 21st century. Um, little things like in Tomorrow Never Knows, when you listen to the drums, you'll hear that when he's doing his fill, ding, boom, and here it hits the tom, you can hear that the tom is panned slightly so that it feels like it's a stereo recording. Uh, the drums have benefited big time for this remix, so I'm sure Ringo is delighted. But Ringo is the real star on this record in terms of being a performer. Uh, his, his performances on this album, and especially with the Sessions album here, really highlight what a great job he did on this album. Listen to the original take of Rain, and if you're not impressed with how that cat was playing the drums, you have... You have to go see a doctor because, my goodness, it's just phenomenal. Phenomenal playing. Um, 
I love my favorite part of the entire box is the session set. The outtakes are worth the price of admission. And in a future video, I'm going to go into detail about those sessions. And I'm going to do a detailed comparison between the original stereo mix and the remix. So, but for now, my, my final thoughts, if you are a Beatles fan and you love Revolver, you need to get this. If you love records, you need to. When you compare this to the 16-bit CD files, there's a, there's a difference in terms of the quality of the sound. And you can tell that because they were using 24-bit files to make the albums. And to me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. If you want the better sounding remix of this album, get this. It's worth it. And I wish that an Apple, if you're listening to me, I really wish you would release the high res files at some point uh, if you haven't done so already. So is this album worth getting? Again, if you're a big Beatles fan and you love Revolver, this is a must own. If you are a record lover, meaning vinyl, and you love vinyl, you have to have this. It's Although I do believe it's an overpriced set, it is... There's a lot of quality there within how the covers were made, the lovely booklet, and again, the records are pressed really well. And again, we're pressed at the Czech Republic, so we know where that was, and they sound pretty good. One day they'll be pressed at RTI or, you know, maybe a quality record plant, but we'll see. If you liked my very first video, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please hit subscribe, like, and hopefully you'll hear more videos in the days and weeks to come. Uh, coming up, part two will be a detailed comparison between the original stereo mix as well as the new remix stereo, and also a detailed video on all the sessions and outtakes that are here. Thank you so much, folks, for watching my very first video on my channel, Spinning Round. Again, my final thoughts. If you love vinyl and you love Revolver, it's worth it. If you are just a casual fan, then get the single set. And if you're in the States, you can get the independent version, which has the single album and a cute little tote bag. So unfortunately here in Canada, we're not getting that stuff, which is a bit sad. So, all right, that's me done for today. My name is Christopher. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again for watching this video and we'll see you soon. Spin it, baby. Spin it round. We'll see you again.